Did you know that it is entirely possible for you to lose weight without being on a diet and to keep it off? <laughs> I am here today to share with you three key principles from the Bible that helped me to lose 85 pounds and keep it off. So if you're wondering if it's possible, I'm here to tell you that it is. If you've never been here before, I just wanna welcome you. My name is Casey. This channel is all about healthy Christian living and you'll notice with Ruth and Casey, but Ruth is actually not here today, so it's just me. But let's dive right in. I wanna share with you these three key principles. So the other thing before I get started is make sure that you stick around till the end because I am gonna share with you the one light bulb moment that really got me focused and able to lose the 85 pounds that I wanted to without being on a diet. So here we go, right into principle number one, and that is moderation and portion control. So you might be going like, yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, in our society, we have gotten away from moderation and portion control. Think about the last time you've eaten out at a restaurant and think about the mentality behind value equals big portion size. So what we're worried about there is how much value we're getting for our dollar, but we're not considering what that's actually doing to our bodies. So we have to stop thinking that value is associated with more, 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 because that's that might be good for our pocketbook, but that's not good for our body. That's not about portion control or moderation. So we need to get back to those two basic concepts, moderation, which means like sometimes not always, not too much, right? Like think about your own definition of moderation with what you eat. Moderation doesn't mean that, you know, you're gonna go through the drive through three days of the week or three meals of the day. Moderation doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have ice cream every night. Moderation we can look at from like a daily perspective and a weekly perspective and a monthly perspective. We can look at moderation from a bunch of different perspectives. So you have to determine what moderation looks like for you in terms of what you are going to choose to eat. Maybe for you, going through the drive through three times in the week is moderation compared to the way that you're currently living. So you gotta start asking yourself, what does moderation mean to me in my life, the way that my life currently looks? And then start to make some changes to incorporate moderation in what you're choosing to eat. And then start managing your portion sizes. Now. Portion sizes, even with healthy foods, we don't need to eat too much. Think about food as fuel for your body. You don't need too much fuel. When you go fill up your car at the fuel station, at the gas station, you don't keep going once the tank is full. That's just wasteful. And when we overfill our bodies, that's wasteful as well. We also don't wanna underfill our bodies. And so many women are on like starvation diets where, you know what? Our bodies need food as fuel, but our bodies need good, healthy, nutritious food as fuel. So we gotta start paying attention. Now, if you've been around for any length of time, you've probably heard me say, one healthy meal does not make you healthy, and one unhealthy meal does not make you unhealthy. It's what we do consistently over time. So if you start incorporating moderation and portion control into a healthy diet, and when I say diet, I mean the foods that we are consuming, because I don't believe in fad diets where we're saying, I can't ever eat this, or I have to count all this, I'm never gonna have this, and I'm only gonna eat this. I don't believe in that. I think that that is what creates yo-yo dieting, and I think that's what contributes to so much of our lack of self-worth and confidence in who God made us to be, because we're always trying to live up to some unrealistic expectation of who we think we should be. So I don't believe in fad diet culture. So when I talk about diets, I simply mean the food that we are choosing to consume. So we have to start looking at portion control and at moderation. And I want to bring this back to what the Bible says, because this really is a biblical principle. And I want to just talk for a minute about Proverbs 25 verse 16. It talks about honey. It says, do you like honey? Don't eat too much or it will make you sick. Think about that. It doesn't say don't eat honey. It says don't eat too much or it will make you sick. It will make you sick in the moment. In fact, another version says it will make you vomit. <laughs> so it will make you sick in the moment. It will also make you sick in the long run because our bodies were simply not designed 
to have too much. We aren't meant to overfill our bodies because look what happens when we do that. And we are living in a society and in a culture where, you know, we've just become accustomed to overfilling ourselves and we gotta stop. So that is principle number one. Okay, biblical principle number two that helped me to lose 85 pounds and keep it off without being on a diet is this. Get rid of the processed junk and chemicals and manage how much sugar you are consuming. Now, in our world today, the average North American is consuming, on the last study I read, more than on average 100 grams of sugar per day. Now our bodies are actually only designed to handle about 25 grams of sugar per day, mostly from natural sources like fruit. So the average North American is currently consuming more than four times the amount of sugar that we should be, and it's mostly from like chemically produced man-made sugars that are not good for our bodies. Now, if you start to read labels, look for words that end in O-S-E. That is like anything that ends in O-S-E is basically a hidden word for sugar. Dextrose, maltose, high fructose corn syrup. There's so many hidden sugars in the foods that we eat. It is absolutely alarming. And the thing is, we can still eat a lot of those foods and remove the sugar, and then we still get to eat what we wanna eat, but we're actually giving our bodies good stuff rather than just a bunch of sugar-laden crap. So I always like the example of tomato-based products, okay? Think about the last time you bought a bottle of ketchup. Now, almost everyone that I know has a bottle of ketchup in their fridge. Did you know that that's actually a sugar-based product, not really even a tomato-based product? If you look at the amount of sugar that is in that bottle of ketchup, it's actually sickening, okay? You can find different ketchups that have way less sugar. In fact, you can even find some that have no sugar. Now, that is a much better choice for your body than the one that is packed full of all the crap of all the sugar. Here's the thing, all those chemicals, all the processed junk, all the sugar is causing your cravings. It's causing you to not ever feel really full or satisfied. So you keep going back for more and more and more and then you overeat because your body's not getting any good nutrition through that food. So we have to start getting rid of some of that processed junk and getting back to basics. God made some incredible, not some, God made incredible foods for us to enjoy that actually taste amazing. And we gotta get back to basics. We gotta start, you know, looking at the labels as we go through the grocery store. The next time you go to buy tomato sauce, look for a brand that does not have sugar in the ingredients list. You can find them, but you're gonna have to look. You're gonna have to start getting intentional about managing how much sugar you're consuming and about getting rid of some of that processed junk and chemicals. In fact, one major um, ingredient to look for to avoid is called maltodextrin, okay? And maltodextrin is often used as a shelf stabilizer, but maltodextrin has been proven to actually be causing your cravings. Now, I'm gonna talk for just one quick second about the glycemic index. Now, you might not know anything about the glycemic index, and I am not going to try and explain it here because that's like a whole topic for a whole other video, but the glycemic index is an index that was made from zero to 100 that basically tells you how much a certain food will spike your blood sugar, okay? That's essentially like a very layman's term overview of what the glycemic index is. So that index was created from zero to 100. Maltodextrin, depends what site you look at, the glycemic index of maltodextrin is over 100. It's like 120 to 140 the last time I checked. It's actually off the charts. Our bodies were not designed to handle foods like that. In fact, how can we even call it food? I often say foods can either help or harm our bodies. And so much of that chemical processed junk, so much of that added sugar is actually harming your body. And all of those ingredients, you know what? They make us sick over time. They might not make you sick in the moment while you eat it, but it's making your body sick in the long run. It's taking your health away. So we've got to start looking at food through the lens of, is this helping me or is it actually harming me? And so the verse that I wanted to talk about with this, why I believe that this is actually a biblical principle is uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20, where it talks about how our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to treat our bodies like a temple, not a trash can. 
Maybe you've heard us say that before. Treat your body like a temple, not a trash can. We can't put garbage into our bodies and expect health. We can't put garbage into our bodies and expect to be at a healthy weight. In fact, I often take it one step further and say we can't put garbage into our minds, bodies, or souls and expect a healthy lifestyle. So the second principle is really to start reading the labels and get rid of the processed junk that you're currently consuming and manage how much sugar that you are eating. Okay, the third biblical principle that I used to lose 85 pounds without being on a diet and keep it off was actually a big shift in the way that I was thinking. Now, ask yourself this question, why do I want to lose the weight? Is it because you're busy comparing yourself to everybody else? Is it because you don't like who you are? Is it because you're embarrassed? Is it because you hate yourself? Is it because you have no self-worth? Well, those, in my opinion, are what really feed the fad diet culture that makes us say stay stuck, that keeps us on those yo-yo diets. They are negative starting points. It's because you don't like yourself. You're punishing yourself because you don't like who you are. I don't believe that that is a good reason to try and change your lifestyle. I think that as women of faith, as Christian women, we should be choosing to honor the bodies that God gave us because we love ourselves enough to treat our bodies well. Now, sometimes women go, yeah, but you know, loving yourself, isn't that kind of like self-centered, egotistical? Well, it can definitely cross that line, but the scripture that I want to talk about with this point is Mark uh, 12, verse 31, where it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, we are called to love ourselves. So we need to start thinking about losing weight from the perspective of, I want to do this because I'm taking good care of myself, because I am loving myself well. And that right there is a game changer. That right there is what can change your mindset from I'm just on another diet to I am going to make healthy habit changes to my lifestyle to reclaim my health, to reclaim my weight because I am doing it to honor God and honor the body that he gave me. When you are busy dieting because you don't like yourself, because you're comparing yourself, because you're trying to live up to an unreasonable standard for who you want to be, like you're never going to get there. You could diet and, you know, lose the weight that you want to lose. But with that mindset of, you know, wanting to be somebody you're not, of trying to live up to the unrealistic standards, even if you lost all the weight that you want to lose and get to that like magic number on the scale that you have in your head, you still won't like yourself then. It's still not going to be enough because all of those thoughts are rooted in not being enough. And so then when you get there, it still won't be enough. We have to change the way that we think about it. We have to make choices that honor our bodies because we are loving ourselves enough to do it. And then what happens from that is it changes the whole perspective. It helps you to start focusing on the process, not the outcome. And this is another big point that helped me to lose. This is like a bonus point number four for you that helped me to lose the 85 pounds and keep it off without being on a diet was that I began to focus on the process, not the outcome. I stopped focusing on the scale because the scale is just a number. The scale doesn't necessarily indicate the progress that you could or could not be making. It's one number. The scale moves slower than most of us expect. Am I right? <laughs> And that doesn't mean we should quit. That doesn't mean we should go back to our unhealthy ways. That's the opposite of what's going to get us where we're trying to go. So the more that we can begin to focus on the process of treating our bodies well, of loving who God made us to be, then the more we're going to continue making the better, healthier choices. And so that shift in the way that I was thinking, like that helped me so much more than I could ever possibly begin to tell you. You were made without mistake. You were created on purpose, for purpose, to live a life of purpose. And when you're busy hating yourself, I believe that that really hurts the heart of God because you were created with intention. And does that mean that we should stay stuck in unhealthy bodies when we have the ability to make better choices? No, absolutely not. We want to honor these bodies well. And so that means that we need to start thinking about how we eat from the perspective of 
is this helping me or is this harming me? And so, you know what, that point right there, I think is really truly the key because when you start to think differently, you will begin to make different decisions. So I'm gonna do a really quick recap here. The first point was moderation and portion control. The second point was all about eliminating that processed junk and chemicals and managing how much sugar you're having. And this third point was all about changing your perspective, choosing to love yourself enough to treat your body well. And then I promised that I was gonna share with you like the light bulb moment that I had that really set this whole weight loss journey on fire for me where I learned what it meant to lose weight without being on a diet. And it was this concept right here. I choose, I do not cheat. How many of us have been on diets where you have like a cheat day once a week? Okay, how crazy is that, right? That we have cheat days on our diets. Do you cheat on anything else in your life? Do you cheat on your spouse? Do you cheat on your tests? Do you cheat to get results in other areas? Nope. Well, at least <laughs> at least most of us don't want to cheat, right? We want to live a life that lines up with what we value. So then why are we willing to cheat on our diet and cheat on our health? Now, I'm not saying that you're never going to eat the birthday cake again or that you're never going to have the chips or the chocolate again because that's not realistic. But what I am saying is that rather than using the language of I'm cheating on my diet or doing it in secret or pretending that nobody's seeing you, own it and choose it. Okay, if you are going to eat that birthday cake, choose it with intention. Don't say you're cheating on your diet. No, you are making a choice. Okay, own it. And don't try and hide it because what we hold in the dark holds power over us. And cheating has that whole connotation of shame and we hide it and we're trying to keep it in the dark and then it holds power over us. If we bring it out into the light, if we take ownership for that choice and that decision, it puts a whole different perspective on it. And so for me, when I flipped that around and started saying, I choose what I am putting into my body today, that set the whole weight loss journey on fire for me and I was able to lose 85 pounds without being on a diet. And if you didn't know, I'm in weight loss mode again after having another baby. And so I am putting these principles into play every day in my life to lose the weight. And I know that if you do too, that you will be able to lose the weight without being on a diet. I really hope that this video has been helpful for you. I know that sometimes the information is not maybe new, but sometimes it just hits us in a different way where it's like, woo, that makes sense for the first time. So if this video has been helpful for you, if you have stayed and watched, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and you know what? You can even push that bell notification so that you do get notified when we upload new content. And I just wanna say thank you for being here and look for more upcoming videos from us of how to live a healthy Christian lifestyle. So until then, I will see you later.